I never in a million years thought I would see my government or my country turn into what it has. And my responsibility as Prime Minister is to serve all Canadians, not just the Canadians who voted for me. And that will always mean listening to people you don't agree with and figuring out how to compromise in ways that keep people safe. When the government violates any Canadian's charter rights, we all end up paying for it. I don't think you can get on a plane or a train besides vaccinated people and put them at risk. Now, it is an important principle of our democracy that we will always defend in the right to free expression and the right to peaceful, peaceful protest. That is something we will always do. The small fringe minority of people who are on their way to Ottawa or who are uh, holding unacceptable uh, views uh, that they're expressing do not represent the views of Canadians. Hey everyone. They have been the topic of the hour, especially with the release of their book that has reached the number one seller spot on Amazon. I'm talking about the author, Derek Smith, and the illustrator, Kaede Kleip. Mr. Smith wrote a book made for children and adults about the Freedom Convoy and the Emergencies Act that has been deployed by the Liberal government to dismantle this peaceful protest with extreme power. On Friday, Ontario invoked a state of emergency to respond to the blockades. This was the responsible and necessary. Kaede Knight is partner on this project is a young 18 years old girl who loved to draw and had the opportunity to express herself and the story in partnership with Mr. Smith. She is really happy that her work is appreciated and wants to thank all the reader. This is her statement that she provides us about it. The title of the book is How the Prime Minister Have Stole Freedom. This book resembles the one where the Grinch stole Christmas. While I was reading the book, I noticed they mentioned the incident that happened to me. I'm talking about when the RCMP shot me point blank in the left leg during the dismantling days. If you still want to contribute to fight this in court, please go to standwithalexa.com and there you can donate generously. We need to make them accountable for what happened that day to me, but also to all Canadians who didn't deserve this treatment. Today, Derek Smith is telling us a bit about the book and why it was important for him to do this. With everything that's gone on um, <clears throat> over the last two and a half years, it was really important to find a way to laugh, I think. I, I think people have really forgotten that over the last few years with how serious and uh, devastating things have been for people in terms of travel, their jobs, uh, school for children, mental health. Uh, this was kind of a lampooning to take a jab at, at the gaffes of uh, our current leader, uh, as well as kind of bring light to everything that happened during the Freedom Convoy. Uh, it was never meant to be maliced or, or negative in any way. We just wanted to take a lighthearted approach. I personally never have questioned COVID-19. I've never said that it's a terror, you know, it's, a, it's an easy thing or it's, it's non-existent or it's very terrible for a lot of people and a lot of people have suffered as a result. But, um, and we do mention COVID in the book, but it's, again, it's meant to be as a humorous standpoint rather than serious. Mm -hmm. I saw that you mentioned my incident uh, during the Freedom Convoy. What it was important for you to mention um, the fact that I've been uh, injured by the police at the front line. I think it was important on the end that I, I was glued to the TV during the Freedom Convoy. I was watching a lot of the live streamers uh, from, you know, guys like Live with the Shed to War Campaign and Zot and You Ottawa Scotty and Ottawa Walks, all these different guys, even Rebels coverage uh, down on the grounds uh, with Ezra and uh, as well as yours. Um, and what I found was 
how quickly things escalated blew my mind as a Canadian because I thought we lived in one of the freest nations on earth. And it turns out that the way things were handled in terms of escalation, um, this went from what I, I, mostly peaceful protest. And I can understand why people would have had, you know, in Ottawa would have had a discrepancy with what was going on. I understand the inconvenience to having all these trucks in the streets, but I think the way things were handled, especially were um, very high escalated. And, and when I seen uh, the, the, the riot police, so to speak, uh, on rooftops and, and ganging towards people and then physically abusing a female independent journalist mm -hmm. uh, for simply doing her job. Um, I thought it was very important to point those things out in this book, especially if it took off simply for the fact that uh, independent media, especially outlets like yours and True North are commonly ignored by the mainstream media as well as the government. And I thought it was important to shed light on that. So we started production shortly after the convoy ended. Uh, I, we, we, my, my illustrator and I launched a book, uh, earlier last year, well, around Christmas, we, we wanted to test the market because I had an idea of doing something with the prime minister, but, um, we wanted to test the market and see if there was a demand for things like that. So we wrote a book called let's go Brandon, which mocked on the Joe Biden joke. Um, and that joke was trending towards the Christmas season. So we thought that's a good time to see if people are wanting to buy this as gifts, um, and get the word out. And, and it had some mild success. So uh, once the Freedom Convoy ended, it was kind of the light bulb that went off and, and we decided let's get things moving. So right around the end of March, uh, we started production. And uh, did you expect that your book will blow the market as that? You know, I, I, I've said in numerous interviews already that, that I had expectations that the way Amazon works with their ranking systems, I thought that we definitely hit number one in one of our categories. I did not expect the book to blow up uh, as much as it did. I actually had the assisted help of a YouTuber by the name of Clyde Do Something, who, who reports a lot on similar things that, that Rebel reports on and has a lot of the similar viewpoints uh, in politics. So I, I reached out to him and said, you know, would you consider reviewing the book? Would you like to uh, maybe just post a video about it? Because it could help me out getting awareness out. And he did a, rev a glowing review, a very nice review, and his community jumped out and just instantly started purchasing the book and spreading the word. Uh, they, they did a fantastic job and, and I couldn't have done it without his help. So the book originally, what I was trying to do was follow, there's, there's been other successful books in the uh, adult slash children's format genre. Um, there, there's, there's some illustrated books that have really skyrocketed in terms of popularity that have the image of a children's book, but pertain to adults. Um, this book was wrote in a kind hearted fashion as to not defame anybody or step on anyone's toes, but also to it was intentional towards the adults as kind of a gaff towards uh, the Grinch or a Dr. Seuss style book, books that people might have grown up on mm -hmm. um, in their childhoods. And, and I've heard people saying that they've been reading them with their children and that's acceptable. I mean, I think the content is definitely acceptable for children, uh, but it was never intended to be strictly for children. We we're very careful not to put any words out that we were trying to indoctrinate children or make them feel a certain way about politics. I, I think part of what makes this country great is that everybody has a choice. And, and when children grow up, they have the right to vote. And I think that they should make those choices based on their own personal situations and what works for them. And, and uh, I, I applaud anybody who has the ability to read this with their children, but also explain uh, the ramifications of a vote and how hard it weighs down on uh, everyone's lives. Do you have a specific stance uh, in politic regarding to the prime minister or regarding of what happened with the Freedom Convoy? Do you, what is your vision of what is going on right now? Me personally, uh, I feel that like it's chaotic. Um, I never in a million years thought I would see my government or my country turn into what it has. I'm a very passionate person when it comes to my country. I'm very patriotic. And, you know, growing up, I, I, I'd never seen this kind of behavior before in my life. And I think I can't really solely blame that on a party so much as what people have demonstrated. I, I don't want to label an entire party simply because of the actions of a few. Um, what I went through during the convoy was embarrassment. Um, I got to a point where I looked at my country and said, is this what it takes? for people to get back to normal, that a bunch of hardworking truckers have to jump in their vehicles and occupy the government's front lawn for a few weeks just to get them to listen. 
Uh, we should never have to get to that state. And and um, I'll tell you, over the last uh, four to six months, I, I've I've personally become a lot more uh, patriotic again and more more um, excited to represent my country. I'm proud of my country again, but I'm proud of the people, not necessarily what the government has done. Do you have a specific message for them? I think my only message is just to treat people the way you want to be treated, no matter what side of the fence people stand on. I think that what people have forgotten is to agree to disagree with each other. Um, today's society seems to be a lot of uh, the louder I am, the more correct I am. And I don't agree with that. I think that it's important for people to listen to one another. I think it's important for people to discuss politics, to, to discuss where our government is headed, because at the end of the day, it affects all of our lives. Um, I, I've asked from the beginning that people treat each other respectfully and uh, just love each other in their country. That's that's primarily uh, what I think is important in this world. So, as you know, we are still going in court to make the RCMP accountable to shot me point blank in my left legs and for all the damage that caused to me not only physically, but mentally as well. But I was well to represent all Canadians who didn't deserve that treatment that day. So if you want to help us to contribute to my legal challenge, please go to standwithalexa.com and make this a win for not only me, but all Canadians.